It's recording, Mona. Jai Baba, everybody. Welcome to the Lord Meher book reading tonight from Mumbai. And uh, welcome to another day. And I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Thank you. Um, maybe, Marvin, you could start reading. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> We're on page 2,226 2, in the year 1941. <clears throat> but now, because of his weakened health and the harassment of Mayabic forces, Baba decided to shift to Panchgani immediately. Bungalows were hired for the men and women, and separate accommodations was made for Baba to be in seclusion. Maya was shamed. No sooner had Baba announced his new plan than the dust storms subsided. Observing the change of, the, of weather, the Mandali requested that Baba continue his seclusion in Maribad, but he did not agree and fixed the date of leaving for Panchgani. On 1 September, Baba stepped out of his seclusion to get ready to leave and to see the women. On the morning of 3 September 1941, Baba left Maribad for Panchgani at 7 a.m. with the men and women Mandali in Elizabeth's car and the blue bus. No one saw Baba entering the car. As soon as they arrived in Panchgani at 10.45 a.m., Baba went straight into his bungalow without being observed. Chati Baba was kept in Baba's bungalow, and Baidul and Krishna continued to look after the musk. The men and women Mandali, as usual, occupied separate houses. Baidu, Kailamama, Krishna, Nilu, Vishnu, and Venkoba Rayo were with Baba in Panchgani. Baba Nanda, Ustaji, and Pleader had been sent to Mahabaleshwar to continue their seclusion under Baba's orders. Ali Jr., Murli, and Padri were in Meherabad conducting a free medical dispensary, and the rest of the men, Shagan, Pendu, Sailor, Sidhu, and Jangal, had been given other duties. Kaka was in Bombay, but came to Panchgani for a few days at the beginning of September. In Panchgani, Baba continued his inner work with Chati Baba. On the 5th, the must was found to be in a very ill-tempered mood. The next day, however, he was again his usual genial self, but he told Krishna to tell Baba to send him back to his home in South India. Krishna informed Baba, who remarked, his time is up. If he asks again, I will send him, but all my plans will have to be changed. When Baba was in seclusion in Meherabad during August 1941, some distorted reports appeared in the press regarding his meetings with Mahatma Gandhi in the early 1930s. Gandhi's English follower, Mirabhan, was reported to have told the author, Ron Lando, the following. I know all the details about the connection between the two men. It was always Sri Meher Baba who went to see Gandhi, never otherwise. <clears throat> they first met on the Rajputana, and Baba sent round word asking whether Gandhi would receive him. Gandhi, of course, consented. They had a talk, and after that, Sri Meher Baba visited Gandhi again in London. But you may state quite emphatically that Gandhi never asked Meher Baba for help or for spiritual or other advice. He liked Meher Baba, and he talked to him as he talks to everyone who wants to see him. That was all. <clears throat> in Landau's book, God is My Adventure, he wrote about this subject. He also told James Douglas, the London editor, who had interviewed Baba years before, what he had learned. Inquiries were made by several newspaper editors about Landau's statements. Chanji came to Maribad four times in August to discuss the situation with Baba, and an appointment was made for Chanji to meet Gandhi at his ashram in Segaon on for September to clarify the matter. Gandhi was preoccupied with other matters, but Chanji broached the topic with Mirabhan, 
and afterwards wrote Gandhi about it. He came to Panchgani and reported everything to Baba on the 8th. Ganji met Gandhi again on the 18th and 19th of September and then came to Panchgani. After going through the distorted reports, Gandhi wrote to Chanji, Dear Dada Chanji, with reference to the alleged interview with Merubin and reported by Ran Lando, you may announce to the curious that it was not Meher Baba who sought me out on the SS Rajputana, but I who sought him out in his cabin. And it was I who used to go frequently to his cabin. And this I did for the love of Jamshed Mehta, who had cabled me that Babaji was a fellow passenger with me and that I should speak, seek him out and try to understand him. Aris, uh, footnote. Mahatma Gandhi respectfully referred to Mayor Baba as Babaji. And as you were Baba's interpreter of the alphabetical plate through which he had, which he held converse, converse with the world, you know the spiritual nature of our conversation. I had further invited Baba to meet me in London during the time I was there. There was no question of masterhood and discipleship. I have never felt like being a disciple to anybody in a spiritual way, though I am still and have always been in search of a guru as I hold every seeker of as I hold every seeker of God should be. You are sincerely Mohandas Gandhi. Well, at least we got that straight. As part you of were his right, work, Marvin, you were right last week. <laughs> yeah. As part of his work on 9 September 1941, Savak brought 15 destitute beggars from the village of Wei, whom Baba bathed, fed, and clothed at his bungalow. The weather in Panchgani stayed sunny during Baba's first week there, but it started raining on the 11th. For the first few days, Baba continued fasting on one scant meal a day. For some days, he remained on fresh-squeezed orange juice, and at times he would drink only water or tea. Baba began his orange juice fast on the 12th and re-entered seclusion the same day. He continued fasting for nine days. As it continued to pour down rain during this time, no fruit was available in the bazaar, so Baba had to be content with only water and tea for three days. Chati Baba again lost his temper on 12 September 1941, and Baba decided to send him home to Nagapatinam with Baidul and Krishna on the 15th. The must had been staying with Baba continuously for almost two years. At the time of leaving, the must wept copiously. Baba too appeared filled with sorrow. Margaret Kresk recalled, I have never seen so much sadness in Baba's face as when Chati Baba's car drove away. Accompanying Chati Baba, Baidul had been instructed by Baba to be careful to only drink tap water and not to drink river, stream, or well water during the journey. When Baidu returned from taking Chati Baba back to Nagapatinam, he had a severe case of typhoid. Baba asked him, did you disobey my orders? I was very thirsty and there was no tap water for miles around, Baidu said defensively. I had to drink from a spring. Why did you break my orders, Baba demanded. You, who have been in my service for so many years, how difficult it was to bring the boys to Mehebrad from Persia, but you did it. Now, in such a small thing, you disobey me and ignore my warning. You would have died, but because you still have much work to do for me, you will live. After a bitter scolding, Baba forgave Baidul and instructed Nilu to treat him. He recovered after some weeks. Maya still seemed to be active in Panchgani. Without warning, on 10 September 1941, Swami Babananda committed suicide in Mahabaleshwar. Holy man. For a few days, the police did not connect him with the rest of Baba's men staying there. Kustaji and Pleader were nevertheless reluctant to continue staying so close to the scene of the death, and so Baba called them to Panchgani on 19 September. 
Baba Nanda had joined Meher Baba in Bangalore and had been staying in Meherabad. The man Mandali later learned that before meeting Baba, he had murdered a man and hence, presumably, his guilt led him to hang himself. After hearing of Baba Nanda's suicide, Baba commented, he will immediately take another birth and advance spiritually. <clears throat> Baba began eating on Sunday, 21 September, 1941, and stopped his seclusion work for four, four days later. On the 28th, a telegram was received that Kippy had died in America. Baba left Panchgani on a must tour with Gustaji and Kaka on the 30th. Baba visited many places and contacted many musts, traveling some 3,000 miles in two weeks by the lowest train class. Baba's identity remained concealed so he could travel incognito throughout the journey and thus continue his seclusion. Baba visited Narsobawadi near Kolhapur, Kurund, Kurundwad, Itarsi, Allahabad, Fentimpur, Kanpur, Ismailpur, Ajmer, Indori, and Kandwa before returning to Panchgani on 14 October. At each place, Baba would select certain spots and stay in seclusion for a short time, doing his inner work connected with the world. All of Mayor Baba's contacts with saints, walis, musts, yogis, and advanced pilgrims have special and personal significance to him, even though much remains unrevealed and thus unknown and unrecorded. Among the significant contacts Baba made on this journey was the one in Allahabad, where he contacted the spiritual chargement of the area called Bashir Mastan. He was a rather unusual must, Baba said, because he embodied the combination of the five distinct characteristics of musts. In Ismailpur, Baba again contacted the saint Gohail Baba. In Ajmer, Baba communed again with the Majub Chacha and the musts Laksham Shah, Lakham Shah and Kabriston Walla, also known as Socrates. In Kadwa, Baba contacted the Hindu saint called Harihar Dadaji, who was a chargeman of the guru Duniwala Baba. And as Duniwala Baba had always done, Harihar continued to keep a sacred fire, a Duni fire, burning day and night. This saint was head of an informal ashram of disciples. Perhaps again, Baba's movements were related to developments in the war in Europe and throughout the world. For during this period of his travel, Germany, Germany was heavily attacking Moscow. As the German army approached the outskirts of Leningrad, the Russian government evacuated Moscow and abandoned their capital, moving headquarters to Kubayshev. However, Stalin stayed in Moscow to lead the Russian troops in their defense against the Germans. And while Japan was preparing to declare all-out war, plotting to take over Hong Kong and planning an invasion of the Philippines and an air attack on America. In Panchgani, during October of 1941, commenting on world conditions, Baba observed, This world is truly in a world. It has gone mad. Look at the conditions all over. Law and life nowadays are all upset and in the throes of destruction. There is no regard, much less respect, for either. Laws are broken and lives destroyed inconsiderably and ruthlessly. Words and codes of honor have no value. Solemn promises are sniffed at and documents taken for scraps of paper, all for selfish ends and for the gratification of lust and greed. In short, now law and life are as you take them. When Baba had left, oops, 
When Bob had left on his recent must tour, he had permitted the Eastern and Western women to go together for a picnic or a walk while he was away. But he had ordered them not to eat any wild fruit they might see. Sixteen of the women went out for a walk at sundown on 13 October 1941. One of them dug up what she thought was arrowroot and passed it around to taste. Only Carmen Massa ate some. By seven o'clock that evening, she became violently ill with severe stomach pains, high fever, and a swollen red face. Dr. Nilo, whom Baba had ordered to look after the women, examined her but could not diagnose what was wrong. All night, Carmen Massey tossed from one side of the bed to the other. Everyone thought she was about to die. The next morning, Baba returned and heard the full story. He saw Carmen Massey and put his hand on her forehead. It turned out that what Carmen Massey had eaten was not arrowroot, but a poisonous plant given to buffaloes who are fatally ill to put them out of their misery and kill them quickly. By Baba's Nazar, Carmen Massey gradually recovered within a week. For several years, Upazi Maharaj had been earnestly telling Gulmai, I wish to see Merwan. During this period, Gulmai repeated this to Baba, who replied, I will see Maharaj only once and alone, meaning Maharaj should not ask for another meeting. Baba stipulated that the place of meeting should be away from either Meherabad or Sapuri, and added, I will see him on the condition that, since I am still observing silence, I will not speak to him. Gulmai told this to Maharaj, and he consented to the terms. Maharaj took Gulmai to Dagaon, a few miles from Sakori, where he showed her a hut. Gulmai returned to Panchgani and informed Baba, who fixed the date of their meeting for 17 October. He stated, to meet Maharaj, I will come out of my seclusion for one day. Baba summoned Thanks, Sugo. Mahalo. <laughs> Is it okay if Rosalie reads from here? <laughs> yes, sure. Thanks. Baba summoned Sarosh to Panchgani from Amanagar with his car on the 16th. That whole night, Baba's health appeared terrible. He had such a high fever, the Mandali thought it would be impossible for him to keep the appointment the next day. But by the following morning, like a beautiful blossoming rose, <laughs> Baba appeared with his usual smiling countenance and asked each of the Mandali, do you know why I am seeing Maharaj? All gave an answer and Baba explained, I will present Maharaj with a locket. Baba left Panchgani in Sarosha's car at 7.15 a.m. on Friday, 17th October, 1941. It was Dasara that day, an auspicious Hindu holiday. Sarosh was driving, and Savak and Rano accompanied them. They reached Pune at 9.30 a.m where Memo gave lunch to the group. Baba left for Maribad at 11.15 a.m., arriving there at 1 p.m. Sarosh went to Amanagar to pick up Bulmai and Kakabaria, returning to Maribad at 2 p.m. Rano was left at Maribad to do some other work, and Padre was taken in her place. After he and the other Mandali entreated Baba to allow him to accompany them, Padre was anxious to take photographs of the two masters together. Daigaon is about 40 miles from Maribad. The group left at 2.30 p.m. and reached there after an hour and a half. Baba looked over the site and was satisfied with it. There was a small thatched 
hut surrounded by a beautiful garden. Yeshwant Rao was waiting for them, as Maharaj had sent him in advance to unlock, sweep, and clean the hut. Sarosh and Gulmai left to bring Maharaj from Sakori at 4.30 p.m. Baba instructed Gulmai to bring only Maharaj and no one else from the ashram. They drove to Sakori and returned to Daigawan at 5.30 p.m. with only Maharaj. Alighting from the car, Maharaj strode toward the hut where Baba was already sitting alone. According to Baba's order, the others kept outside the compound and were not even and were not to even look towards the hut. They were only to enter the boundaries of it when Baba clapped. After an hour, after half an hour, the Mandali heard clapping. It was 6 p.m. They saw Maharaj and then Baba come out of the hut. Baba's face was flushed. Gulmai rushed forward and garlanded both, and the Mandali offered obeisance. Yeshwant Rao went forward to take Baba's darshan, but Maharaj prevented him, saying, Meher Baba Chah Ho Kum Nahi. Meher Baba's order is not to take darshan. Baba laughed at this. Padre was busy trying to take photographs in the diminishing evening light, but both masters would not stand still. Maharaj looked at the camera in Padre's hand and asked, what is that box? Footnote. In 1936, Baba bought a German Roloflex camera for Padre. Many of the photographs of Baba's hand gestures and his work with the must and the poor are due to Padre, who wanted to convey to the world that even though Meher Baba was silent, he, quotes, spoke, end quotes, and was, quotes, active, end quotes, and dyn dynamic. Not a single Mauni or yogi sitting still in a meditation pose. Oh, wait, uh, correct that. Not a silent, where is it? Not a silent Mauni or yogi sitting still in a meditative pose. Padre was afraid Maharaj would be annoyed and take a swing at the camera, but nothing like that happened. And Padre went on taking pictures, immortalizing the momentous meeting. After final salutations, Sarosh drove Maharaj back to Sikori, and Gulmai, Padre, and Kaka accompanied them. Before leaving, Maharaj remarked, this meeting was ideal, solitary, and at the same time, so near. Maharaj asked when they would be returning to Panchgani, and Sarosh informed him they would be starting back immediately. Maharaj said to drive carefully. Gulmai remained at Sakori. Meanwhile, Sabak remained alone with Baba. For the first and only time in his life, he stated, other than night watch. Baba asked him to sing, and Sabak amused Baba with Hindi, Gujarati, and English love songs. When Sarosh returned, Baba and the others left for Maribad. They stopped at Kushru quarters to collect their dinner, 
prepared by Sarosha's wife, Vilu, and then went to the Amanagar railway station, where they ate it. Padre was driven to Maribad, where he got down. Baba, accompanied by Rano, returned to Panchgani, where they arrived at 1.20 a.m. On the way, Baba was in a happy mood and remarked to the men about the meeting. I took his darshan. Avatar or not, he was my master. He lifted me with both hands, embraced me heartily, and wept like a child. We sat down and he talked for half an hour about the war, my speaking, suffering, etc. Then I motioned, I must be going. And he said, wait for five minutes. We will not meet again. Now, Merwan, you have all the work and powers of the great Sat Purush, the five perfect masters. They are all focused in you. I leave everything to you. And so saying, he folded his hands in reverence and I felt moved. I presented Maharaj with a box of my lockets, which he surveyed with deep thought. That must be his hair lockets, lockets of his hair. Wow. Baba concluded, I will speak any day from February 15th, 1942 to February 15th, 1943, unannounced. It will be when all the world has gone to the dogs. And Maharaj will at the same time leave his body. It will all automatically be so. But I shall speak unannounced. You won't know even a day or an hour ahead. In the future, there will be infinite suffering for me physically, too. No one dared ask Baba more. But when they reached Panchgani, the Mandali persuaded Vishnu, the usual stooge in such matters, to ask more about his meeting. Baba elaborated slightly. I can bring down the stars. I now have full powers. Maharaj has handed over his side of things to me. Footnote. On a latter occasion in 1954, Meher Baba explained that during their final meeting, Upasni Maharaj had requested him to watch over Sakori, Gadavri Mai, and the Kanyas. Age was awed by the significance of the meeting and wept with joy. Baba was meeting his master, Upasni Maharaj, for the first time in 19 years since the time of Manzilimin on 15th October, 1922. The infinite ocean was meeting its reflection, but it was to be their final meeting in physical form. Thank you, Padre for the photo of Baba meeting Upasni. At the beginning of October, 1941, Baba had directed Chanji to write to Meherji Karkaria in Iran and arrange for himself and the women and men, Mandali, to travel to Iran at the end of 
November, at the end of November. Baba intended to stay at Bandar Abbas for a month. And then after the winter, somewhere in the interior of the country for two or th to three months, Meherji had written back accepting responsibility for making all the arrangements and enthusiastically welcomed Baba to come. But after considering the cold climate at that time, uh, can someone turn the, uh, someone needs to oh, mute. Rosalie, someone's radio is coming through. I know, I'm asking people to Why mute. Why don't you mute, Ralph? Okay. But after considering the cold climate at that time of year in Iran, as well as the water at Bandar Abbas being unfit for drinking, Baba changed his mind and instructed Chanji, who arrived in Panchgani for a few days on 19 October, to inform Meherji by telegram that plans were canceled. While this was occurring, Baba had also been directing Margaret Krask to write to Elizabeth Patterson about the possibility of traveling to America. He indicated it was necessary for his work to cross the ocean. Letters and telegrams went back and forth. After his meeting with Dupasni Maharaj, this cable was sent. Momentous spiritual decision. Thanks, Rosalie. Mahmoud, can you take it from here? Sure. So this is page 22234 in 1941. He indicated it was necessary for his work to cross the ocean. Just start from this paragraph, Mahu. Momentous spiritual oh, decisions. Okay, sure. The second one. Thanks. This cable was sent. Momentous spiritual decisions necessitate my speaking any day between February 15, 1942 and February 15, 1943 and also crossing the ocean in the middle of December 1941 latest. Funds insufficient. Must cancel America. Therefore, definitely prefer Honolulu, Philippines, or any place in the Pacific incurring less expensive fare. This is Baba's tip. But in the end, Baba decided instead to, instead to go to Karwar along the western coast of India and then Merabad. Kale Mama was instructed to hire bungalows in Karwar, Darwar of Belgam with the assistance of Vishwanath Haldankar. Only when Japan became aggressively involved in the war in the Pacific during December 1941, did Margaret realize the significance of Baba's cables about that region. After Baba's return to Panchgani, he, he had the following circular issued by Adi Senior in Bangalore, who handled such matters. It is 23 October 1941. So Cable says, during the momentous meeting with Sheri Upazni Maharaj on 17 October 1941, it was decided that Sheri Baba would speak on any day between 15 February 1942 and 15 February 1943. Baba will not announce the date of this speaking beforehand. Baba will be in seclusion until 15th of February 1942. His seclusion in the month of November 1941 
will be at place on the seashore. At a place on the seashore. Those who have been ordered to observe the certain kind of fast from 1st, 1st of January 1942 to 15th of February 1942 shall also observe the following orders during the same period of one and a half months. One, to read understandingly Baba's pamphlet on meditation once a day. Those who cannot read should have it, have it read by somebody. In this case, the reader need not read it separately for himself. Two, to repeat in low voice for half an hour daily one of the following six lines of names of God. Parabrahma Paramatma Ya Yazdan Ahura Mazda Nirakar Parvardegar Allahu Akbar Allahu Hari Narayan Bhagavan And you need to roll it up, please. Hari Narayan Bhagavan and God Almighty omnipotent. Three, immediately after this half an hour of meditation, repeat the name of your master for five minutes. Four, no fixed time for observing orders one and two is enforced. They may be observed simultaneously or separately according to one's convenience of time. Five, Baba says, my instructions, whatever they might be, that are to be observed until 15th of February 1942, should be observed with utmost sincerity and interest. Next page. Because after the 15th of February 1942, till the day I speak, which will be unannounced, there will not be any more seclusion or fast by me. And accordingly, there will not be any special orders for anyone from me. On Sunday, 26, 1941, Baba commented on the recent court case faced by Narayan Maharaj and indicated that he would like to meet Narayan Maharaj also. As mentioned, Narayan Maharaj was being sued by a devotee who had given him 5,000 rupees and then demanded its return, which Narayan refused. Baba said, that's his quote, why shouldn't Narayan Maharaj return the man's money? He is rich enough, as are his wealthy disciples which include princess who could throw away such a sum at a word. Then why this refusal for such a small sum? It is for a purpose to create that doubt as fuel for the opposition, for him to work through. It is justified. For example, if you fall into a pit full of filth and, ref and refuse, refuse representing Maya Sanskaras, the pit, should I not help you and bring you out of it, even if my hands and feet are bespoiled in the filth? Should I care for the world who would misunderstand, ridicule, and remark as to why I should spoil my hands in field or for my work of helping you out. Let the world shout, it is their ignorance. Pity them, for they know not what they do, but master must go on with the work. Before I speak, I must meet all masts and sadhus. Mast business of mostly finished, 
I also met Maharaj. Now I must meet Narayan Maharaj and others who should go to give him this message. Who should go to give him this message? He should come to me. I must not go to him for certain spiritual reasons. The place may be selected anywhere convenient to us both. And there is a footnote. The footnote says, subsequently, no face-to-face -face meeting of Meher Baba and Narayan Maharaj ever took place. Meanwhile, in Panchgani, the men and women Mandali had been instructed to meditate according to Baba's order. Some were having thoughts as to why they had not yet realized God, despite serving Baba for so many years. Baba narrated to them a story about the Sadguru in answer to their unspoken question. A disciple used to always ask his master why he would not realize God in view of the fact that he had served him so faithfully for so long. The Sadhguru continued telling him to have patience, and the disciple in his eagerness kept pestering him. One day a fair was Thank you, Mom. Sure. Thank you. Um Mayor Kiran, would you like to read next? Yeah, thanks. One day, a fair was held in a nearby village. The Sadguru told his disciple, Go to the fair with a cup of milk in your hand and return with a cup still full. Then you will be one with God. So the disciple, thinking it is an easy thing, did as he was told. But when he reached the fair, he was so engrossed with alluring sights around him he forgot about God's realization. He pushed through the cross, so as not to miss seeing anything, all the while spilling the milk. When he came back to his master's residence, no milk was left in the cup. Seeing him approach, the master said, Now, according to my promise, I will give you God's realization. But let me first see the cup. The disciple was ashamed and confessed that all the milk was lost amidst the wonderful carnival. The Sadhguru said, What can I do now? You were attracted by worldly allurements and forgot my order. Had you real desire for attaining God, you would not have been caught napping and tried your best to save the milk. But you were ensnared by filthy things of the world which bind you. So how could you long for God? The disciple then realized that despite years of service to the master, as long as worldly attractions last, there is no hope. Baba's Mandali too had the answer to their ruminations, and they laughed over their foolish thoughts. On another occasion, explaining about meditation and prayer, Baba remarked, citing this example, Don't meditate mechanically. Meditate in the form of a prayer. And get so much drowned in it that you lose yourself. An Arab always wore a golden ring on his finger. He was a great lover of God. And when he prayed, he forgot everything. Once he was praying, a thief cut out his finger and stole the ring. But the Arab was so engrossed in prayer, he did not feel the slightest pain. This is called prayer. This is real prayer. While Baba was in seclusion, when he went out to contact mass or to visit places with a woman, he had to be careful getting into the car to avoid anyone coming to him and taking Dushan. When he was about to leave Panchgani on 28th October 1941, 
noon, a god man called Jagannath, who was singing loudly, started walking toward Baba. That was a, I must have read, a god mad named Jagannath. Chanji stopped him, but Baba stood by the car waiting and permitted the man to approach. As he came close to Baba, he uttered, You are the avatar of Lord Vishnu. Pray, grant me the Lord's boon. Baba smiled and motioned, You are quite lucky. I know how immersed you are in your devotion for Lord Vishnu. My blessing to you. The man cried out, My work is done. He stood before Baba like a beggar, tears flowing down his face, choking in a shaking voice. He uttered, No one knows you here. I saw you and recognized you at once. You are the avatar of Vishnu. You too know me. Baba gestured, I know everything. That is why I have come to you here. The man became elated and burst forth. My life desire is fulfilled. Jai Lord Vishnu. Jai Lord Vishnu. He bowed to Baba and then left. The same man had passed their houses on the day they had arrived from Rabat. At that time too, he had been singing and had seen Baba from a distance. Referring to Jagannath, Baba remarked, he is on the threshold of the path and intensely longs for sight of God. Baba and all the men and women then left Panjgani in the car and blue bus. Tukaram drove the bus and Nilu served as his assistant mechanic. They reached the Darwar Dak Bangla at night near 10 o'clock traveling via Satara, Belgaum, and Kohlapur. The Mandli and servants traveled in a separate bus and they went by train to Karwar. The next day, 29th October, Baba left for Karwar, where he arrived at quarter past one in the afternoon. In Karwar, Vishnu's cousin Sushila and Indu were again called to manage the kitchen. Indu's husband, Vishwanath Haldankar, was also there with the men Mandli, helping with arrangements. According to Vishnu, Baba found Karwar rather unsuitable at first. The weather was sultry and the house in which they were staying was too small. The woman assured him it was alright, so Baba agreed to stay. Baba asked Margaret to teach the woman swimming, which she began doing under Margaret's and Rano's watchful eyes, Mehera too was learning to swim. For several days of lessons, Baba ordered each of the women to do 15 strokes while he watched from the shore. Most of them managed to swim, but money sank like a stone. Thank you. Uh, Ralph, would you like to read from here? Okay. Eva, would you like to read next? Sure. Walu, too, could not swim and would only wade into the water. Baba would accompany the women to the beach early in the morning and sit watching them for an hour. In the afternoons, he would sit in seclusion in a room for a couple of hours doing his inner work. In the evenings, he would go for a walk with the women. Baba would remain on the sands, encouraging the swimmers. It was a delightful sight, age remembered, a wonderful time of great enjoyment. A sweet melody of divine music permeated the air and made the swimmers feel that they were swimming in a shoreless ocean. Of course, they were constant companions of the ocean. But when the waves rise up, one's life derives wondrous joy, ultimately leading to real joy, which has no limit. Playing a part in the divine game and enduring the pain of the arrows of the beloved's humor was opening the floodgates of inner joy 
transforming the drop's radiant happiness into unending bliss. Baba stayed in Karwa for a week. Chanji arrived there on 1 November. While he was there, the local collector requested an interview by letter. Nilu responded that the collector would be permitted to have Baba's darshan from a distance, but no interview. The man came in his car on the evening of the third. By mistake, he drove to the Mandali's bungalow first and parked there. After he saw Baba, a locket and photo were given to him along with Baba's blessings, which he deeply appreciated. When the man returned to his parked car, it was found that the battery was dead. Baba sent a special message indicating that this had happened for a purpose. When one approached a master for Darshan, Baba explained, it was beneficial to come on foot rather than by car. Therefore, the man should walk rather than drive back to his residence. The collector took it in stride and did as Baba indicated. The man offered his car and large bungalow to Baba, where he said Baba and his group would be more comfortable, but Baba declined the offer. On 8 November, 1941, Baba and the group left for Belgaum by car and the blue bus. In Belgaum, he stayed in the bungalow of the Maharani of Savatwadi in the suburb of Hindalga. By agreeing to stay in her bungalow, Baba remarked, he was giving her the opportunity of seva during the period of his seclusion. Kitty was giving typing lessons to Mani and Katie, and Katie, which were a prelude to Mani handling correspondence in the future. Golmai arrived to see Baba on the 10th. And the same day, Baba visited a place called Dharmanshala, a gathering place for wandering sadhus 12 miles from Belgaum. On 12 November, Baba left Belgaum for Darwar at 11 o'clock, reaching there three hours later. Also, Mokashi's bungalow at Septapur, which had been rented, was quite spacious. There was the problem of scarcity of water. Krishna, Venkoba Rao, and Kashinath, an employed servant boy from Darwar, were given the work of bringing water after drawing it up from a deep well. But then Koba was weak, and Kashinath also had the duty of doing the marketing. So the task usually fell to Krishna. To bring sufficient water for nearly 40 women was an exhausting task. On Friday, 14 November, 1941, accompanied by Baidu, Krishna, Kristaji, Savak, and Kaka, Baba left Darwar by train to see Chati Baba. He first proceeded to Bangalore, where he spent the night as at Zulika Lodge on Margaret Road. The next day, they traveled on to Nagapatinam. Chati Baba had left his usual place for another spot quite far away 
and Baba had to traverse 12 miles of rough dirt roads to find him. Heavy rain began falling, but Baba continued through the mud and slush, wading through knee-deep water to reach the place where the great must was sitting. After Baba's contact with Shati Baba, he and the men went to Bangalore for the night of the 17th, where Baba met the Jesawala family, Adi Sr. and Don. Baba described his meeting with the Pasni Maharaj to them. Don recorded in his diary, it's like a deep drink of celestial wine to see Baba. Baba left the next morning and returned to Darwar on the 19th. On the way back, Baba contacted musts in Bellary and Hubli. One must was called Chella, a subtle conscious initiate who had taken a vow of silence and fasted for long periods. The must was a disciple of a great yogi called Swami Siddharud, who was famous in the area. Chota Mastan was a very high must of the sixth plane. He was a young saint, only 22 years old, who sat naked in all weather on a particular stone in a street facing a public water tap. The people of Hubli called him Dev Purush, meaning divine man. He was truly a remarkable young saint. Soon after he was born, the boy was abandoned by his mother and found wrapped in cloth in a rubbish dump by a sweeper who gave the child to a barren woman who longed to have a child. The woman adored him as if sent from God and cared for him as her own son. At the age of only 10 years old, Chaota Mastan was overwhelmed by God's love and became a must. He left home at 10 and wandered naked to parts unknown in India until he gained sainthood. During one contact, Baba put his coat on Chahota Mastan, but the next morning they found he had given the coat away to someone and was again utterly naked. In Bellary, Baba contacted a must called Shah Mastan, whose abode was hidden in a cemetery amidst a vast forest. Baba and the Mandali went in search of him in the cemetery on the night of a new moon, which according to superstition is dangerous. People fear that a person could easily get lost in a graveyard on such a night. After searching for hours in the darkness without a trace of the must, they persuaded a Tonga driver who claimed he knew where the must hid to guide them through the cemetery. All night they searched but they did not find the must until morning, even though he had apparently been in the cemetery the whole time. Baba also went to Bijapur on 24 November, 1941, where he contacted Kwanwala Baba, a must who lived on top of a large pile of municipal rubbish. A young man named G.S.N. Morty was a staunch Brahmin. His father was the editor of an English monthly journal and Morty once happened upon old issues of the Meher message 
and may her Baba journal in his father's library. He was drawn to Baba's words and pictures, but he did not believe him to be an avatar. On the 23rd of November, in response to a letter from Murti requesting a message for a booklet in honor of Jita Jayanti, the day when the Bhagavad Gita was given to Arjuna, Baba sent this message and even signed it. The greatest need of humanity today is love, love divine, which is pure and selfless which awakens man to the proper sense and understanding of his real duty in life, which is to find true happiness in giving, not receiving, in serving and not in being served, and in willfully participating in the sufferings of others more than just their happiness. My mission in life is to kindle that divine spark of love in all. 14 years were to pass before Gia and Morty had the opportunity of meeting Baba in Meherabad, after which he became his devoted lover. Chanji met Baba in Darwar on the 25th and received instructions for finding accommodations for Baba and the group in Sitara. Once in Darwar, Krishna was 15 minutes late in bringing water as he was feeling drowsy and had overslept. Baba was waiting for him at the gate. And when Krishna came, he was angry with him and scolded. I don't want to see your black face ever again footnote. Blackface is a colloquial expression relating to someone's dark thoughts, not skin color, similar to when someone is said to be in a black mood. How many times have I told you to be honest and regular in your duty, but you don't play, pay the slightest attention to my words However much one may water seeds on a stone, there is no hope of their taking root and you are like a stone. On another occasion, Baba went for an outing with the women and directed Krishna to be on watch at the gate until his return and not to enter the women's bungalow. There were four maid servants from Meherabad in the bungalow, Lakshi, Bahami, Rakhama, Rakma, and Tani. At one point, a snake was seen in the house and Rakma called Krishna to kill it, but he refused to leave his post. When Baba heard about it on his return, the women servants had complained about Krishna. Baba asked him, why didn't you kill the snake? Krishna replied, your order was not to leave the gate. How could I go to the house? Baba then asked, had there been a fire in the house, would you have gone? Krishna said, no. Baba corrected him remarking, I would have been very pleased had you followed my order in this way. However, you did not obey for the sake of obeying me. On the contrary, you were irritated at my order not to leave the gate. That is why, although outwardly you obeyed, you have not obeyed me and have instead given vent to your anger. Baba added, it was on account of your being in such a bad mood that the snake came in the first place. Now, if you want to please me, find the snake and kill it. At first, Krishna could not find it, 
But after three quarters of an hour, he saw the snake crawl out of the window of the women's house. He called Baba and told him, but by that time the snake had disappeared and Baba indicated to let it go. This was unusual because Baba's standing order to the Mandali was that whenever a snake was seen, it was to be killed. One day Krishna saw a cobra near the women's bungalow. He threw a stone and struck it, but did not kill it. Someone had told him never to let a wounded snake escape because it would return to bite the person who had injured it. When Krishna was keeping watch by Baba's side that night, Baba asked why he looked so worried. Krishna told him about the wounded snake and Baba inquired, was it a cobra? Krishna said it was. And Baba said, yes, it must be killed. It will come back and bite you. Are you afraid? Krishna said he was not. At the end of night watch at 5 a.m., Baba told Krishna to go rest. Before he left, Baba warned him repeatedly, be sure to tuck your mosquito net inside your bedding. Otherwise, ants might come inside. Krishna's cot was outside under a mango tree. Soon after lying down, Krishna heard the rustling of leaves and saw the same cobra coming toward him. He shouted to Nilu and Vishnu to bring his stick. Because of the tight mosquito netting around his bed, the cobra had been unable to enter. Krishna killed it with the stick. Baba's warning had saved his life. During the years he stayed with Baba, Krishna said he had killed 47 snakes. Thank you, Eva. You're welcome. For their return journey to Merabad, Baba sent for Saroj to come to Dharawar and drive the blue bus to Ahmednagar. The group left on Thursday, 27th November, 1941, and spent the night in the dark bungalow at Satara. There, Baba spelled out to Saroj in front of Chanji, Nilu, and Vishnu. This is the last journey of the blue bus. You're very lucky to drive myself and the Mandli in this bus on, the, on its last trip. You were the one who had it built, and now it's you who are taking it on its final journey. The blue bus is like the chariot of Krishna, and after my manifestation, people will worship it. The bus should be sold in a lottery among our close ones, and the winner should keep it on condition that he does not derive any commercial benefit from it, either by applying it or hire or by selling it. This bus has great importance and to keep its essential, sorry, and to keep it as essential, I have done much work through it and it is Sarosha's great good fortune to be driving God in person on its final run. That night in Satara, a draft circular was prepared to be sent to hundreds select Baba lovers about Rafa. Baba and all returned to Merabad the next morning at 11.30, the 28th. The circular about the blue bus was finalized and posted to those concerned. Wartime travels for the mass. Such a beautiful picture of Baba with the poor person or a mass where Baba is bending over and I think giving him his blessings. It's just so beautiful. You can feel the energy till here. <laughs> so nice. Let's just see that picture for a minute and connect with it. That's 
Thank you. Baba continued his seclusion upon his return to Mehrabad at the end of November of 1941. But this time he began seeing those of the Mandli to whom he had assigned different duties. Mostly he would keep to himself in the tomb and do his inner work in seclusion during certain hours. The men kept watch on all sides and no one could make any noise or either the fixed boundary without permission. Bemo, who had come to Mehrabad from Pune for a few days at one point, had an argument with Gulmai, remarking about her. Their confrontation on Thursday, 4th December 1941, Baba told the monthly, Father Shiryarji was a seeker, an extremely good soul. He was very good-hearted and he was quiet by nature. But the nature of Sherin Ma is just the opposite. I have to balance both favorable and unfavorable dispositions. I tolerate a lot and have to suffer much because of her nature. Still, she will be emancipated and gain salvation as has Sharia G. On the 5th, discussing with Chanji, the matter of Mahatma Gandhi, Baba dictated the following message which he instructed Chanji to send to Gandhi. Stick to the truth at all costs, even if it means giving up your political life. Do not try to force non-violence or unwilling adherence, nor even try to establish it, since it is already eternally established. On the 6th, about some people, some who did not obey him implicitly, Baba remarked, all are like children playing and making mischief, crying. The parents tolerate it all. They do not throw the children out on the street. Similarly, you are all children. I have to tolerate a thousand and one whims and weaknesses of each. I can't throw you out, especially those who belong to my circle. Papa Jaisawala arrived that day from Nagpur and was given watchman duty on the hill. Masa Ji had been sent to Pandarpur to bring mass and brought Two on the seventh. Shirin Mai arrived the same afternoon, and Chanji left that evening and returned to Merabad three days later. When Baba returned to Merabad, he instructed the Mandali to again start lighting the Dhuni every month from the 12th December. The Mandali thought his this was perhaps for the purpose of bringing down rain, since the Dhuni had previously been lighted with that intent. But Baba explained, this time the reason for igniting it is not for rain. It is a certain definite purpose of my work. And I think this would be a good place to end tonight. Thank you. And we end on page number 2243. Next week we shall pick up from 2244. And uh, Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. <clears throat> Great reading. And, and you were right about um, Gandhi, Marvin. Very interesting. Still recording. Of yeah, yeah. It, it's in Lord Mayer back in the early yeah. where it happened. Can you stop the recording so oh. that we can pick up uh, our chat? That. Okay, maybe it's long.